for me, I mean, the best VTT for me, and maybe for you, that's what this video is about. Welcome to Polyhedron, I'm Ron. So I got into the whole virtual tabletop world like many people very recently during a pandemic powered quarantine where I was just longing for lost human connection both with my friends and with new people who are also my friends. They just, you know, didn't know it yet. So without knowing too much about virtual tabletops, I went to the most well-known one, which was either because maybe they've been around longer or they have better marketing, Roll20. And Roll20 is really cool. To be honest, Roll20 blew my mind. I've never played an online tabletop game. Dynamic lighting, are you kidding me? That's seriously cool. And if you're expecting me to now say how I then discovered that Roll20 actually sucks, then no, it doesn't. It's great, and I'm sure I'll use it for more games in the future. Currently, it supports way more game systems than any other tool. And, you know, the cool thing about the VTT space is that you don't really have many bad choices. Wherever you end up, you'll probably be fine. It's like, you know, when people get super religious about iPhone and Android or Mac or Windows, and it's like, you're not cheating on one by using the other. It's fine. Use whatever. It's fine. <laughs> anyway... The cool thing, uh, for me at least, about the VTT space is that while of course a lot of these companies are out here making money, um, I don't think that a lot of people set out to build a VTT for those fat stacks. I think that all of these projects have passionate people um, who love role-playing games and decided to dedicate a chunk of their lives to building these incredible platforms. So I played a few games on Roll20 as a player, and then I started DMing, mostly D&D 5e, and I still loved it, but it did start feeling a little clunky. The dynamic lighting kept acting a little weird when I tried to set it up, and my players were running into some minor issues, so Roll20, from a player perspective, Mostly fine. As a DM, I ran into some issues, and when I saw that um, when I wanted to customize things, you have to go into scripts and APIs, and I was just not going to do any of that, and I decided to explore the vast world of virtual tabletops, and I went down a rabbit hole of games and research and Reddit and money. So first I looked at Fantasy Grounds, which is robust and amazing, and I watched Matt Colville's hour-long video on it, and I will watch that man talk about anything for however long because I just want to touch his beard, but Fantasy Ground was a no-go almost immediately for me. Learning curve was way too steep, all players had to install software and the learning curve was way too steep. It's definitely the most advanced and most impressive in terms of automation for the big games like D&D 5e and like Pathfinder. Not so great for other systems. I did play a few games there as well and I was deeply impressed. Roll20 all of a sudden looked terrible in comparison, but I found myself going back to Roll20 because it was just easier and it was easier to get other people to play it and it was easier to find a group. So anyway, after doing a bunch of research and playing a bunch of games on uh, several of these different platforms, I found Roll20 to be the easiest to get up and running with, but it started, I don't know, like bursting at the seams a little bit when I tried to uh, customize it, and it was a little clunky from a DM perspective, still very manageable and still a very impressive piece of software. Fantasy Grounds just seemed to me like you know, it's amazing, but I don't think I'm the target audience for it. I think that it's for way more advanced players. Um, it's important to me that when I play a tabletop game, even if I'm playing it online and I'm using all the bells and whistles that make it awesome online, like dynamic lighting and maps, I still want to feel like I'm playing a tabletop game. Uh, and with Fantasy Grounds, it started like there was so much other things that I had to learn and set up around it, that it started feeling more like I'm playing a video game, which is, you know, not necessarily a bad thing, it just wasn't for me. Uh, and also it was a no-go to get other people to install a piece of software on um, their computers for them to log in. And by the way, even though I am advocating for Foundry in this video, it's not that as a DM on Foundry, you don't have to do anything. You still have to do some work and it can take time. I just found that piece of it more fun to do on Foundry and more intuitive 
Um, and I really enjoyed all the setup that I did on Foundry, which I didn't on Fantasy Grounds. So personal preference, as I said earlier, you'll, you'll probably be fine wherever you land. Anyway, down the rabbit hole, I continued going and eventually I got to Foundry, which as far as I know, the core software is developed by one guy, which blows my mind. And at first glance, Foundry has a lot of the same features as Roll20, the same automation, but I just found the Foundry interface easier to use, more intuitive. And after one time playing around with it, I felt proficient. I felt like I could do whatever I wanted with this. But still, it's, um, it's 50 bucks and then you can either host the software locally on your computer or you can pay a little extra to have it hosted for you. And for players, it's as easy as logging in from their browser, just like Roll20, but I wasn't ready to take the plunge just yet. And then I discovered two things. One, the community around Foundry. I mean, Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, Astral, all of these have great communities around them. But the Foundry community is something special. The Reddit, the Discord, something about this piece of software drew some incredibly kind people to it. And I fell in love with that community even before I had the software. And the second thing is the modules. There are developers out there extending Foundry every day with incredible modules that let you do pretty much everything you can think of. Um, the one that personally made me get the software is a module that lets you import stuff from D&D Beyond. If you're playing D&D 5e and you want to have the monsters and rules and everything in the virtual tabletop, and if you want to run like a published campaign, you can spend a million hours building all of these things out, or most likely, you, most likely you'll buy the Roll20 version or the Fantasy Grounds version, like whatever VTT you're playing on, which I get, and it's perfectly fine and reasonable. Fantasy Grounds, Roll20, and D&D Beyond are private companies who are not Wizards of the Coast, and they have to make their own money. And I also get that the value that you get out of buying an adventure on D&D Beyond is different from the value that you get, you know, buying the same adventure on Roll20. But still, it kind of sucks to spend money on something that you maybe sort of own already. Especially the source books, like the Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master Guide, the Monster Manual, like those ones. Now, I love D&D Beyond. I love how you can organize stuff there, and I love the character creation. I love all of it. And I own a bunch of stuff on D&D Beyond. And there is a Chrome extension that lets you roll dice from D&D Beyond into Roll20 and Foundry, which is cool, but it only really solves a tiny, a tiny bit of the problem. The Foundry module that lets you import stuff from D&D Beyond into Foundry, including Complete Adventures is nothing short of the most spectacular thing I've ever seen since the birth of my daughters. Okay, maybe not that good, but it's pretty damn impressive. It does take some work, but it lets you leverage the purchases you've already made or will make on D&D Beyond, which is infinitely more convenient to read stuff on and consume all the knowledge you need on. I really like D&D Beyond. Anyway, now after having run a few games on Foundry, I can also say that it's just a much better experience. The dynamic lighting looks better. The setup is pretty easy. The tools for running combat are streamlined. Let me tell you this. It's not that it took me less time to get up and running with Foundry, and it's not even that it's cheaper. It's that I had more fun using the software and setting everything up on Foundry uh, and actually running the game than I did on any of the other platforms. And it's extensible enough with the modules so I could pretty easily customize it the way that I want it. And I found just an amazing, active and kind community around it. As for playing other games on it, like Blades in the Dark or Iron Sworn, um, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll use Roll20 for those because as we said, it's fine to use the best tool for the job. By the way, I did just check and Foundry actually does support Blades in the Dark. Um, so cool, 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 cool. But my go-to from now on will be Foundry. Um, I love it a lot. It now has my weird little blind loyalty and I will never use any other piece of software for anything. I'm gonna check my emails on Foundry. And I am very interested to see how well this video ages, like will I think the same in a year. 
Who knows? Anyway, that's it. Go, go play a game. Go play a game.